YouTube town family, what's the biz? Y'all already know what it is. Sending that positive energy to my top town family. Y'all know how I rock. If you haven't already, please hit that like, share, subscribe, and notification button so you can stay up to date with the latest and greatest content. You don't want to miss. Tune in, tune in, tune in. Anywho, without further ado, Welcome to Todd Town. Today's video would work as an advertisement for Private Citizen Concealed Carry, but I promise you, it's a real event. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection, where every day we analyze a real defensive use of force caught on camera so that our training and our work can be more evidence-based. I'm your host as always, John Correa. Today's video, a private citizen, not an off-duty cop, out of Ponta Grossa in Paraná in Brazil. This is a cell phone sales and repair store. The guy at the bottom of our screen is one of the owners, a private citizen, he got his license to own and carry a firearm over the last few years, and he is carrying a gun. Watch the robber come in from the right-hand side. Let's listen in and see what happens. We're going to see our defender here Goofy. then stand up, put his hey, gun away, you know and go, then man. eventually the, games, uh, the other folks private. are going to call the hey, cops that was about and as clean, get them as on the way. He's going to kind of go over. He pulled his gun out again. I'm almost positive. And then he is going to go check in. All right, that guy actually lived. Our robber did. He shot at him six times, hit him five, but he actually lived through this and is facing some significant. Wow! So shot six, hit five. That's remarkable. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to, I have to pause it right there just to say that almost every shot on target and the guy lived. Hey man! Whew. It charges. Uh, no one else was harmed. Fast, accurate, good shooting by our defender. Facts. Here. Did you know in the Aspen Limited? That was Aspen, impressive. They have 18 full-length firearms training classes that are included as part of the asp unlimited app please hit the link in the description come over and sign up for asp unlimited we will make you better as a self-defender there is so much over there that we just cannot put here on youtube please join us would you i love it hooray that this man was carrying a firearm and again this is not an off-duty cop this is a private citizen in brazil hmm. which is still relatively rare but does happen so listen carry your gun the, you know, as Tom Givens is famous for saying, is that the bad guy gets to set the time and the place of the attack, and he's only going to tell you about it at the last minute. So I know some people are like, well, I only carry my gun if I'm going to go somewhere I think is dangerous. I think that's a big mistake. If you have the ability to carry your firearm, carry it, because you would much rather have it and not need it than Facts. need it and not have it in this case. So carry your gun. Be good with it, too. So that's what we're going to see for the rest of this. He's pretty darn Take good with it. practice in. So yeah, he's no, carrying his gun about good, it all the time. Got it up front, carrying it front of hip. That's great. I think it's a big advantage to him here because I also think here paying attention is what really wins the day for our defender. Mm -hmm. So you notice our robber comes in. He's got his helmet on still. And our defender is sitting in a place where he can see the door. And I think that that is pretty smart. I don't want to be paranoid about that, but he's in a preferable spot and he's not sucked into his own mobile device here where he is able to kind of assess and see and be curious about who comes right, in the door. In this case, you know, he comes in, guys seeing what's going on and, and recognizing mm, this guy's wearing a helmet. That's a warning sign that he's got his helmet on indoors because that's a, a marker of trying to hide his face. And then the guy pulls a firearm and announces a robbery. Now, our, our defender here, you can see, he pulled his hand back just a little bit. Hard to tell if he was already starting his draw there, but I want to note that he's carrying up front. He's carrying appendix style here, mm -hmm. and that makes for a big advantage for him in this particular case, particularly because he's sitting and not standing, okay? And it makes him visually quiet. So let's look at what he does in terms of his visually quiet draw. That's very important to winning a defensive encounter because you see his first move puts his hands below the counter, and that means he's not being seen by our bad guy. So our bad guy doesn't, doesn't look at this and say, aha, he's drawing a gun. We're looking at me. Whereas if he was moving back strong side towards a strong side holster, 
that visually says more, I'm drawing a gun. Now, right. it might still say that if you were standing up, didn't have the tool over you. But the fact of the matter is he's able to camouflage his draw. That lets him get ahead because our, our bad guy's actually looking at him right now. And I'm grateful that he was able to get ahead. That might be just an, a, a blessed accident because the guy then looks away on the other way. My only, and y'all know I'm going to say something about this. And I know it's a lot of my, my owners and trainees out there as well. Y'all notice how he had to, to put one in the head. He had to rack one. I always advise if you're going to carry a firearm. And I'm pretty sure in certain states, I, I believe the rules and the laws may be different as to why some may and some may not. Uh, but if you can, uh, always have one ready. Uh, that's a split second or two, maybe three, depending on who you are and how fast you can have your fire. Uh, you know draw and get it ready you know that takes that's some seconds that can change uh any event so you know that's that's the only thing that i i would recommend is to have one ready i, I noticed how he had to get one ready and kind of look like he stumbled just a little bit like a smidget before he uh started letting the rounds off but other than that man it was super i mean hey man he did what he had to do on the other side what cost him a ton of time here he gets the gun out and now he has to de you know disengage a slide mounted safety i do not like slide mounted safeties on defensive firearms for this reason exactly because he's got to get the gun out manipulate it and then get the gun into the fight it makes him interminably slow Same, but yeah. because he has such a quiet visual draw it's not really a big deal in many cases it is though so please friends carry a gun that you don't have that kind of safety on but or safety, the sorry, I didn't gets, it look uh, like he wrecked. I didn't know it was a safety. Accurately on target and hits him in an anatomically significant spot. That's that high center chest that we talk about all the time, that kind of eight inch circle. Because his draw time here was 3.75 seconds, way too long. However, because his first hit was anatomically significant, he gets far enough ahead of this guy. He doesn't shoot him in the guts, an arm, a leg, something like that where he can still fight. But watch what happens to our bad guy, that he is going to curl up under the fibs factor, fudge I've been shot, or you can supply a more colorful F word if you'd like. And, and listen, because of that, the guy's not pointing the gun at him. He's not shooting at him. And so our good guy is able to get more shots in him. He takes a second shot here at about a quarter second break. So he's got good recoil control. He's seeing over his sights. He's got two hands on the gun, which gives him good recoil control. Mm -hmm. So he's got good pistol fundamentals. Really good job. And you notice here, his distance is approaching that about seven yards range. So I know a lot of people say, well, the average gun fight's super close. Nah, it's, it can be a little farther than that. Now, notice here as well, he's able to track the guy. See what happens is that as the guy starts moving, our defender tracks him well. He's able to do that because he has two hands on the gun. And so he's able to move that gun adequately and well. This is why in practice we work on multiple targets because it makes us do target transitions, which makes us move the gun, keep our, our uh, gun into that place where the target is and get accurate shots. This guy did hit five out of six. And so good for him for that. Now, Hell once yeah. the shooting is over, he shoots six shots at him. Okay, fine. And then he's like, oh, okay, the guy is down. He does put his gun away pretty darn quickly here. And I think that instead, I want you to start tap ifs. Remember that follow-up action. Threat, is he down? Do I need to hit him again? A, accomplices, did he right. bring any accomplices to the fight? P, partner or either any of my partners in the fight still that I need to deal with? Then I, injuries, F, follow up with my firearm first. So firearm, check it, make sure it's still in good working order. Reload it if you have a spare. Then F, what follow-up actions will keep me safe for S, seek help, call the cops, get somebody and some help on the way. Instead of putting the gun away, I think he put it away a little early here because that guy is not completely out of the fight. He's still mm -hmm. conscious. We're going to see that. Sure, he's got man. a gun. That could definitely have caused some problems. So he's going to get the gun back out here. That's good. So don't be in a huge hurry to get the gun put away when you get in a defensive gunfight. Then again, in the follow-up actions here, once he gets the gun away from that guy, which I assume he did there, he's going to then kind of head out the door. I would have uh, just preferred him lo close and lock that door there, call the cops, wait for them to show up. And when they show up, unlock the door. Because going out there takes you into an unknown space and you don't know what's going to be out there, what yeah. those guys are capable of doing. So I really uh, admire this guy. I am so glad he was armed that day. Super accurate with his fire. Man. Really great work. Oof from him a couple little tiny things here Good in the heat shit. of the moment but don't hear me giving him a hard time this dude 
is a warrior. He covered his ass. Facts. Yeah, not too much I can say on this one. Again, it was that was as good as you can get it. Dead accurate. Five out of six. Like I say, with the speed, and he did address that. That was actually a, a safety mechanism that he was uh, trying to do there. And I, I, I thought it when I watched it the first time. I thought it was actually him sliding, uh, trying to rack one. But again, same thing. We talking about time, and time is important. Whether you taking the safety off, trying to rack one, you know, all the same difference when it comes to timing. Other than that, like I say, man, he did what he had to do. I salute him for protecting his people. I would say with, with the perp, you know, his, his vision was probably impaired a little bit because of that helmet, which gave him the, another advantage. But hey, man, y'all already know how I go, man. You play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Peace. Yeah. Whoa. Thank you.